Do you know which is the largest city in China? Do you know which province has the highest GDP? How many cities in China have more than 10 million population? If you want to know the answers and more, this is the video for you. Welcome back to the channel Global. During the last few months, I've created various videos about different regions in China. And one day, a friend asked me to do a basic video on China's history and geography. Well, China's history is over 5,000 years. I can start a whole new channel just to talk about history, but I haven't seen any video about China's geography and economy on YouTube. So in the next videos, I'm going to show you the real China by going through each region and not only the most common ones like Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, or Xinjiang, but the entire China. So let's get started. First of all, China is a country with 1.4 billion population, 32 provinces, 56 ethnic groups with a total GDP around 18 trillion US dollars in 2022. It's the second largest economy in the world. It is also the third largest country covering an area of 9.6 million square meters. In this vast territory, there are 23 provinces, four municipalities, directly under the central government, two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau, and five autonomous regions. This line from the Heihe River in northeast China to Tongchong, Yunnan on the southwest border divides China into two different parts. One part is the densely populated southeast with fertile plains and hills, abundant precipitation, fast development, and 94% of China's population. On the other side is the sparsely populated land with rugged terrain, deserts, snowy plateaus, harsh climate, and only 6% of the total population. This famous line depicts the imbalance between these two parts of China. The development and economy of each region is also rather different. The GDP per capita of Hong Kong in 2022 is 49,000 US dollars, close to Belgium. Beijing is 28,000 US dollars, slightly above Czech Republic. National average is close to 13,000 US dollars, lower than even Bulgaria, and more or less the same as the rest of the world, while the lowest province, Gansu, is only about 6.6 thousand US dollars, about the level of war torn Ukraine in 2022. Now, China is divided into seven major geographic ridges east, south, north, central, southwest, northwest, and northeast China. We will now go through each of these regions. Let's start with the capital Beijing. Within North China, and in this region, there are also Tianjin, Hebei Province, Shanxi Province, and Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. Beijing, literally meaning northern capital, is the culture, politics, and education center of China, with a rich history dating back over 3,000 years. As the capital of various dynasties and regional regimes, including the famous Ming and Qing dynasty, left many historical sites in the city, including no less than seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Notably, the Forbidden City, Summer Palace, Temple of Heaven, as well as parts of the Great Wall of China. It is the only city to ever host both the Summer and Winter Olympics. It is also the most developed region for higher education in China, including the most prestigious universities, Peking and Tsinghua University, and eight out of 39 top-tier universities. The Beijing Tianjin Hebei urban agglomeration is the largest and most dynamic economic region in northern China, and one of the three major urban agglomerations in China with a combined GDP close to 1.5 trillion US dollars, with more than 110 million population, roughly equal to South Korea in terms of GDP and two South Koreas in terms of population. Besides Beijing is Tianjin, one of China's four municipalities, but the smallest in terms of GDP and population. Surrounding Beijing and Tianjin is Hebei, home to five national famous historical and cultural cities, Handan, Baoding, Chengde, Zhengding, and Shanghai Guan. 
but economically it is overshadowed by Beijing and Tianjin. Shanxi is home to 35 million people and reached 380 billion US dollars GDP in 2022. It is famous for its coal industry, vinegar, and flour-based food. People in Shanxi are just obsessed with all kinds of noodles. Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region is adjacent to Mongolia with 24 million population, including more than 4 million from the Mongol ethnic, which is the largest Mongolian population in the world, even larger than in Mongolia. And as you can imagine, Inner Mongolia is known throughout China for its vast grasslands and delicious lamb meat. Now let's look at the next area in a counterclockwise order. Northwest China includes Shanxi, Gansu, Qinghai, Ningxia, Hui Autonomous Region, and Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Located deep in the inland area, it has abundant resources, but it is very dry, so there are widespread deserts, abundant sandstorms, and fragile ecology. Therefore, the population is sparse, and the GDP per capita is rather low in this region. As a famous historical and cultural city in China, Shanxi is a popular tourist destination for tourists both at home and abroad, with rich cultural and natural landscapes. If you have a plan to visit Shanxi, you have to visit Xi'an, as it is not only one of the four China's great Asian capitals, but also considered one of the greatest Asian capitals in the world. The Terracotta Army is the most famous tourist attraction in Xi'an, as a form of funeral art buried with the first emperor of the Qing Dynasty in 200 BC, with the purpose of protecting him in his afterlife. It is very popular amongst tourists because of its large scale and unique shape. Here you can enjoy the masterpieces of Qing dynasty art and learn about Asian military systems. Within Shanxi, you can also visit Famen Temple, a Buddhist temple with over 1,400 years of history, or Giant Wild Goose Pagoda. As part of the UNESCO World Heritage Silk Roads, the Roots Network of Chang'an Tianshan Corridor. One hour drive from Xi'an is Huashan, Mountain Hua in English, one of the five greatest mountains in China. You can experience the joy of climbing here and embrace the beautiful scenery of nature. Due to its steep mountain paths and spectacular mountain scenery, it attracts many climbers each year to challenge it. But unfortunately, every year there are people losing their lives on the mountains. If we navigate further west is Gansu province with the lowest GDP per capita in China. Whenever Chinese hear about Lanzhou, its capital city, the first thing that comes to mind is always Lanzhou Lamian or Lanzhou Ramen. But local people refer it as Niu Rou or Beef Ramen. On the other side of Gansu province is Dunhuang, an OCS located at a religious and cultural crossroads on the Silk Road. Here lays quite a few historical attractions, but the most famous one has to be Mogao Caves, also referred as Caves of the Thousand Buddhas. It's the best known of the Chinese Buddhist Gutos and one of the three famous ancient Buddhist sculptural sites in China. Further west is Qinghai Province, named after Qinghai Lake, the largest lake in China and the entire province falls within the plateau range. The average altitude of the province is over 3,000 meters. The Sanjiangyuan, or source of three rivers in English, the Yellow, the Yangtze, and the Mekong River. These are the three longest rivers in Asia. Qinghai is also one of the gathering places of ethnic minorities in China, including Tibetan, Hui, Mongolian, where minorities making up a total of 49.5% of the population. Representatives of folk culture in Qinghai, such as Tibetan embroidery art and special cuisine are all unique cultural expressions of Qinghai. Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region is a relatively dry desert-like region and features a diverse geography of forest mountains and hills, tablelands, deserts, floodplains, and basins cut through by the Yellow River. 
the Hui ethnic group accounts for one third of the population and is the only provincial level Hui autonomous region in China. Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region the largest province level division of China by area spanning over 1.6 million square kilometers accounting for more than one sixth of China's total territory. There are about 26 million inhabitants including 12 million Uyghur 11 million Han Chinese and 3 million other ethnic groups. Xinjiang is mostly covered with uninhabitable deserts and dry grasslands with dotted oasis. But it also has some amazing landscape including 5 records in China. Turpan, the hottest place. Tarim River, the longest inland river. Taklamagan Desert, the largest desert. Baing Bluko Swan Lake, the only swan conservation area. Tarim Basin, the largest basin in China. Besides, as the hometown of fruits, you can have the sweetest fruits here. Juicy cantaloupes, grapes, and pears. As the land of singing and dancing, the Uyghur, Kazakh, Mongolian, and other ethnic groups living here are all great singers and dancers. Special terrain areas in southwest China make this region a great tourist destination. This region includes three provinces Sichuan, Guizhou, Yunnan, Tibet Autonomous Region, and Chongqing Municipality. There are three major terrain areas in this region the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau, Qinghai Tibet Plateau, Sichuan Basin, and the surrounding mountains. South China Karst, as a UNESCO World Heritage, is one of the world's most spectacular examples of humid tropical and subtropical karst landscapes. It is a serial site spread over the provinces of Guizhou, Guangxi, Yunnan, and Chongqing. In other words, mainly in southwest China. Within the region, Sichuan Basin has the densest population and the most developed economy. Mainly due to the humid climate, this region is famous for the ultra spicy Sichuan cuisine. Chengdu and Chongqing are the most developed cities in southwest, collectively known as the Southwest Twin Stars. In fact, Chongqing is the only municipality directly under the central government in southwest and ranked the number number one tourist destination of the whole of China. The municipality of Chongqing, roughly the size of Austria, is built on mountains and partially surrounded by Yangtze and Jialing River, referred to as a mountain city and a city on rivers. Hence, you can find many strange constructs in this city. Even though I have never drove in Chongqing, I have often heard it is the most difficult city to drive in China. China's national treasure, panda, is also in this region. Chengdu research base of giant panda breeding locates in Chengdu, the capital city of Sichuan province. It is devoted to being the sanctuary for giant pandas, red pandas, and other endangered wild animals, exclusive to China. Its breathtaking scenery and extremely lovely pandas living freely there make the base a real paradise. Jiuzhaigou Valley, scenic and historic interest area in Sichuan province was inscribed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1992 and a World Biosphere Reserve in 1997. Springs, waterfalls, and rivers there form a colorful jade basin. It is simply a must visit in the region. Yunnan is situated in a mountainous area with high elevations in the northwest and low elevations in the southeast. This unique landscape, mild climate, and cultural diversity makes Yunnan one of China's major tourist destinations. The most well-known scenes include the old town of Lijiang, a UNESCO heritage site, Shangri-La, a county named after the novel Lost Horizon by English writer James Hilton, Xishuang Banna, featuring Dai minorities culture, distinctive temples, and tropical rainforests. And last but not least, Dali, known for its natural scenery, old town, and Bai and Yi minorities culture. Guizhou is another mountainous province, a less developed economy with less than 8,000 US dollars GDP per capita. However, Guizhou possesses abundant wind energy and water resources, including China's largest waterfall, Huangguoshu. 
Hence, in the last years, Huawei, Apple, Tencent, and 19 data centers have been built in Guizhou, making it one of the largest data centers in China. Moving on to the region with the highest average altitude in China, Tibet Autonomous Region. Due to its harsh and rugged terrain, it is sparsely populated with a population density of only 3 inhabitants per square kilometer. Amongst 3.6 million population, 86% are ethnic Tibetans. Here also lays the Himalayas, often referred to as the roof of the world, and the highest mountain on earth, Mount Everest or Zhumulama in Chinese. It is 8,848.86 meters above sea level. And so far, more than 6,000 people have successfully reached the top from both Nepal and China side. But also, more than 300 people unfortunately lost their lives during this adventure. Potala Palace in Lhasa, the winter palace of the Dalai Lama since the 7th century symbolizes Tibetan Buddhism and its central role in the traditional administration of Tibet. The complex compromising the white and red palaces with their ancillary buildings is built on Red Mountain in the center of Lhasa Valley at an altitude of 3,700 meters. So that's it for our first part of this series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel channel and turn on the notification belt so that you won't miss the other videos where we go through South, East, Northeast and Central China. If you have any comments, questions or topics that you would like to discuss in our next videos, feel free to comment in the section below. Here at Glopen, we inspire learning, exchange and business. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.